The Attorney General of the United States facing some tough questions today over what he knew or did not know about a gun running sting gone wrong. In fact, it went so wrong, at least one border agent could be dead as a result. Take a listen to the reaction from the White House yesterday when Jay Carney was asked about a Republican request for a special counsel to investigate this. There has been one call, and I think it's a biannual call for a special counsel by this particular congressman. Uh, once every six months, we hear something similar. And, and the fact is, the Attorney General's testimony to both the House and the Senate was consistent and truthful. He said in both March and May of this year that he became aware of the questionable tactics employed in the Fast and Furious operation in early 2011 when ATF agents first raised, raised them publicly. We're going to talk now with a former U.S. attorney who worked hand in hand with the Justice Department and is now a congressman sitting on the Justice Committee as well as on the Oversight Committee. He is one of those calling for a special counsel to investigate this matter. He is Congressman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina. Congressman, thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Why is a special counsel necessary here? Well, because people have to have conf confidence in the Department of Justice. And when your top law enforcement official gives a demonstrably false statement to a committee of Congress, uh, with all due respect to Jay Carney, um, it, it, both answers could not have been correct. If you say in March and May, both, I learned a few weeks ago, uh, one of those answers has to be incorrect. Uh, he, he was asked a very direct, unambiguous question by Daryl Issa. He gave a demonstrably false answer. Now, what I can't tell you is whether he had an intent to deceive. So I'm very careful not to use the word perjury. But it was demonstrably false. And it, it, we have to have confidence in the institutions of, of justice. And we have to have confidence in the top law enforcement official in this country. Um, I don't think that's too much to ask. The Justice Department has come out and essentially said, what he knew earlier, what he, what he knew a year earlier before that exchange with ISA, was that Operation Fast and Furious existed. That was mentioned in memos and briefings. But not the specific aspect of the program that was most controversial, which was that dr uh, the guns were being allowed by U.S. ATF agents to go from America down to Mexico. Uh, you know, w that we were sanctioning that because we had this whole plan and we were going to track them and they were going to bring us to the bad guys. That all went south. We lost the guns. 2,000 guns wind up in the hands of the bad guys and an American border agent dies. In any event, what they seem to be saying is, yeah, he knew about the operation, but he didn't know about the controversial part. Why do you reject that? Well, Ms. Kelly, there are memos that mention gun walking specifically by name. And, and we ask the Department of Justice officials, you know, every now and again, they'll send somebody to oversight or judiciary. Usually it's the person with the least amount of knowledge about a particular subject. So we can get a series of, of I don't knows. But, but specifically, the phrase gun walking is mentioned in memos that Eric Holder either read or should have read. And so tell our viewers his, what that means, because they may not understand the significance of gun that. Walking? Uh, or, or, or the, gun walking? What is gun walking? Uh, gun walking is uh, when you let guns walk, um, you know that they are contraband, and that you have a legal right to seize them, either arrest them or seize them with a search warrant, and you let them go. Uh, you don't do surveillance on them. You don't put GPS on them. You don't put a tracking device on them. You literally let them walk. Okay, so let me, instance, let me stop you there because I want to read okay. the viewers the, the memo, and then I'm going to bring you back in. So, so this okay. is, so apropos of what the congressman is saying, folks, there is, there is a series of emails back in October of 2010. So this is well before Holder says that he knew about Operation Fast and Furious and the controversial stuff. Uh, the deputy assistant attorney general in the DOJ's criminal division uh, is corresponding with the acting chief of the DOJ's organized crime and gang section. And one of them writes to the other, it's not going to be any big surprise that a bunch of U.S. guns are being used in Mexico, so I'm not sure how much grief we get for, quote, guns walking. It may be more like, finally, they're going after people who sent guns down there. So, Congressman, your point is that this is October 2010, where high-level DOJ officials are talking about guns walking, and Holder is trying to tell the U.S. Congress that he only found out about Operation Fast and Furious, the controversial parts, back in April or May of 2011. So why are his top deputies talking about guns walking in October of 2010? And also, Ms. Kelly, keep in mind, in December of 2010, a Border Patrol agent named Brian Terry was murdered. So if the United States uh, Department of Justice and the Attorney General is not being briefed on the fact that a Border Patrol agent has been murdered and guns found at the crime scene may have been part of Fast and Furious, here are his two options. He's either, he's either so disengaged from his job 
that he needs to go find another one, or he gave demonstrably false testimony to a committee of Congress, neither outcome is particularly good for Attorney General Holder. Need a quick answer on this. What happens if you do get a special counsel? Because some in Congress are saying that's only going to slow things down on the congressional investigation. Uh, it could, but you also get access to a grand jury. Uh, you have all of the uh, accoutrements of, of a federal investigation. You have the imprimatur of the United States uh, uh, law enforcement, either a retired federal judge or a career prosecutor, and you kind of depoliticize it, which, you know, Ms. Kelly, I, I'm a former prosecutor. I take no delight in criticizing the Department of Justice, but if we don't have confidence in the Department of Justice and our top law enforcement officer, we're not going to make it as a republic. So I'll sacrifice the political benefit so the American people can have answers to the questions. Congressman Trey Gowdy, thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. Coming up, we have breaking news.